What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Cheers to Comics podcast. Uh, we're coming again with another edition of, I think we could just call it Movie Blabber, right, Mason? Pretty much just call it Movie uh, Blabber? Yeah, I think we can just Let's call just it, call it Movie now. Blabber. Yeah. It's official. Movie Blabber. This time we're talking about a little movie called Endgame. And, uh, boy, is there so much to talk about. It's the end. This is the end of an era. Um, well, I guess not technically, actually. We still got one more movie. Before Phase Three is technically over, Spider Man's going to tie into that. Oh, then the new Spider Man's going to be a part of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about this movie. Okay. I. <laughs> you said you actually had a lot of things that you wanted to hit in specific order. Um, uh, well, I think it would be just, and we're going to go ahead and just, uh, this is a spoiler filled review right now. Okay. Well, you're just going to go ahead and get that out of the way. Yeah. We're don't, just going to get this out of the way. We don't want to hear spoilers. Okay. Yeah, no, this is for people that have seen the movie and we really just want to, I mean, th- these are just people address that want criticisms, to, uh, address criticisms, loves, joys, praise. You know, whatever. every everything that one does as a fan after such an epic adventure like this particular one. So, I guess well, let's 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 just start from the beginning, huh? Okay. It opens with. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and address something right now. All of that preview shit we saw, that is all just like the first part of Act One. All of the previews, all of the trailers, all of that. None of that has anything to do with the actual plot of the money movie. It is all just set up. Yeah, it's all just set up for Act 1. And I yeah. very, very much enjoy that because originally when they kept, like, after the second trailer, I was like, all right, if they put out any more with everything they put out here, I'm just going to be able to guess the whole movie. And then they put out another trailer and I was like, oh, that's ballsy of them. I bet you none of this is true. And then they put out another trailer, like, what, a couple weeks ago? And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, Do you know who did that several times, like, throughout the whole thing leading up to it? And now I haven't even bought the game, but... Mortal Kombat would release a trailer almost every day. Yeah. Every day for MK11. It's like, at a certain point, stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop. Let us enjoy some of the game. Yeah, well, let me... you, You know, when I was a kid, one of the things that was really great was... Let me enjoy the hype with the limited media I have. Let me get hyped o- up over the, all the th- what I've seen, you know. Don't berate me with stuff, because by the time we got to the release, I was kind of upset, because the next thing I know, YouTube is sending me basically a three-hour video of all of the cutscenes yeah. that we have been shown in the trailers alone. Yeah. That's ridiculous to have that much in trailers. And that is exactly how I felt going into this movie. Um, I am probably more skeptical than, than most going into this. To me, I thought Infinity War was perfect. Uh, I didn't think that this I, I didn't think Infinity War could have been any better. And Endgame came in and yeah, uh, I, I very much enjoyed this movie, but I'm not sure how I've completely feel about where I would rank it at this point. I still I actually think that Infinity War was more of a complete movie than Endgame because of how much we got in this movie and it was just all due to conveniences. Like there was like everything Oh, and, so it played like an anime. I don't know. No, cuz that's <laughs> that's how the majority of animes go for a, for the most part. The majority of anime is based on sheer luck and contrived convenience. Yeah, well, that's that's pretty much what this was. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, isn't that what the MCU's been for all these 22 movies? And essentially, yeah, no, it's just a lot of, like, we wrote ourselves into the situation, and boom, we're just going to use this t- uh, conveniently to make this happen. And I'll be damned if this movie doesn't really start out with just convenience. And all ex- a lot of it can be very explained, but because of how much they had to put into this movie... They couldn't take an extra 45 seconds of dialogue for every single one of these conveniences to turn this into a 3 hour and 2 minute movie to a 3 hour and 17 minute movie just to be able to better explain these conveniences. And that is really where my big issue with the movie is. 
is for someone that I don't know if there's anybody out there that could possibly love the MCU more than I do. I'm not saying there's nobody that loves it as much as me, but I would say that I, I very much enjoy what all of this has been. I, I'm a little underwhelmed just because of the delivery of it all. All of the circumstance, or like all of, not necessarily the circumstances, like the plot and it all worked out very, very appealing. Like when it all started flowing together, I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. But once again, it's a good thing that was like that. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's a, you know it's a it's a good thing that Tony Stark uh, is drifting off into space and rocket ship and let's start out w right there. Um, well, I guess that's not how it starts. It starts with Hawkeye. We finally get to see Hawkeye. Yeah, it starts with Hawkeye, and I want to say something about that. And Please do. One of the things is that with Hawkeye, we immediately see where it's going. It, it was just kind of painful. To sit there and go, and he's going to turn around and his family's going to disappear. Yeah, if that's not predictable, I mean, it was cl very, very predictable. Yeah, I, I, given I'm not really mad at them for starting out that way. I, yeah. But overall, it just, it, it, it was kind of just a little bit disappointing. And it, I don't think it would be near as disappointing if they didn't follow it up the way they followed it up. Right. With a super bluesy freaking yeah. song, man, yeah. into the fucking title. Bah, bah, not, not the bomb, bah, 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 yeah. bah, but the, uh, was it Play Us a Fantasy? Yeah. And really, like, I'm, I'm a super music critic when it comes to these movies, but the, all of the music choices were pretty jazzy and bluesy for the most yeah. part. We didn't get that bump, but a dump, but a dump, but wah! Mm. Oh, we're about to get sued by YouTube. They're going to kick us because I did that. Um, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Like, I, I understand that, you know, copyright strike is apparently getting a little bit more strict on things. Like, what resembles actually <laughs> infringing upon copyright is way too easy these days. But I, mean, we don't, I don't think we need to worry about you All just right. doing a voice imitation. <laughs> gotcha. Can you really imitate Robert Plant properly, though? That's a different conversation. Uh, fact is, it's definitely is that, a different conversation. Um, not necessarily the 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 music that I would have chosen, but that's only because I think they did it better. I think that was really a, an ultimate song to choose. After all of that, like we get this drastic moment, we don't even get any seconds after the dust, and he's like, Martha. I mean, family. <laughs> I want my family back. Yeah. Um. We don't get any second to digest. It's like colorful screen. Do, 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 do. And I, I actually kind of like that. I, okay. I did. I, I like the fact... Because we all knew it was coming. We got plenty of time to digest it in the, the three and a half minutes before we... Not three and a half minutes, maybe two minutes before the dust even occurred. We all, anybody that didn't see that happen, it was their first Marvel movie. Like, it, it was... I mean, that's, and that's plain. It's, that's how it is. I like that they're like, and carrying on. Yeah. Uh, but it just, I don't know. They're, they're, I'm not even talking about that when I talk about the follow-up. I'm talking about something as simple as we end up with Tony on the ship and Nova. I mean, not Nova, but uh, Nebula. God, it would, would have been so much better if we had Nova in this movie. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but we end up with uh, Tony and Nebula and... All of that, I'm fine. I'm th fine with seeing how they're keeping their sanity. Oh, no, they've only got so many... Oh, the paper football Yeah, the football, thing. the paper I thought, football. I thought that was that, cool. Yeah, Nebula, like, and I, then, I had fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, that was great. And we get through it, and, you know, really touching moment. Tony records on the helmet, and... Go to sleep. Yeah, go to sleep. Uh, Nebula puts him in the chair, you know, faces him at the stars. Assuming his death. Yeah. And then, but Tony, but Robert Downey Jr. gives it these like subtle little lip quivers just to make us know that he's not dead. He's... Right. But then, Captain Marvel. Yeah. And this Captain right Marvel, here. and it. I'm just gonna say it. I don't care as much about the about <laughs> about Clint and about what happened to his family as much because you show me a character you literally shoehorned in. With no introduction other than previously a movie which people fucking boycotted. Yeah. 
You you yeah. you you shoehorned in a character directly in the beginning, which people boycotted. But her presence throughout this film is very redeeming. So well, one, thank goodness they they redeemed it with the character design and went to the appropriate thank you. haircut. I lost my shit with that haircut. Like I was, I was so, and I mean that in the best way. When they finally, like that's later on down the road. Um, but I will say that, really, Captain Marvel in itself could all be talked about right now. Like every aspect of Captain Marvel. Oh yeah. And it comes down to her entrance, how she is conveniently like I would say most fans yeah. predicted how Tony Stark would but be brought back. But then she's just a straight up bitch to most people. No, and I understand. She, I understand her explanation is, you know, like, well, there are thousands of other planets that I have to go well, look at. It's not even necessarily like that but being her see, explanation for being a bitch. Is as far as like, has she really worked on? Well, no, she has worked on a team. How about the fucking uh, well, the goddamn uh, uh, Cree? Like, she was on that whole fucking team. So, okay. yeah, she acted like she had never worked with a team before. Because even Black Widow, she was like, "I'm going to kill Thanos." Black Widow's like, "Uh, dog." No, we work as a team, like, maybe, and she was like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Nebula <laughs> worked with a team better than and, and even And even uh, War Machine was like, bitch, we've been superhero, and we all about that superhero life. He even says that we all about that yeah. superhero life. <laughs> Straight up calls her out. But at the same time, even Rocket, like, Rocket is kind of like the, the, the emotional character, like, his reaction to the presence and dynamic between the team and her and the way he reacts, I feel, is really what we all needed. When she goes on her explanation after, he's like, what's up, fur face? I mean, this is later on in the thing. I'm mm. just saying, we're talking Captain Marvel specifically right. right now. He was like, ah, you're a bitch, but yeah, you're right. You're right. So it's, uh, what, what, the way he reacts, and like because Rocket's okay with it, I think we could all be okay with, with the way it all goes down there. Well, I, I feel like that was just really important. If it wasn't for that interaction with Rocket, I might have actually hated her character throughout. But Rocket and the way he's like, yeah, I don't fucking like you either. But you know, I, you, the shit you're doing does right. make sense. Right, right. Uh, and and I, I get some of it, but it's, it's not even the character interaction so much as it is how everybody else kind of felt more introduced already and because we had had so many movies with and them and once again something and that could have been she, redeemed with when, 45 seconds of dialogue exactly when they have her in the picture there is little to no introduction and it's just what's up Danvers yeah yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, by we're, the way, we're just 22 get... days ago we met. Let's, yeah. like, talk about that for a second. Because remember when Fury brought us in and I can't right, right. called me down? Like, can we at least, like, even just reference the meeting well, point other the... than the fact that they have been searching for Tony for 22 Here, days? Well, here's the thing is I wouldn't care so much except for the majority of your movie for Captain Marvel took place in the goddamn 90s. And... Excuse me. We did not get a lot of present day follow up with her and the present team. For real. If anything, she should have had the haircut by then. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Like, the nineties have passed. When when we first get that glowing glare off of Tony Stark's face, that should have been the moment we saw the haircut. Yeah. It wasn't until five years. Mm later oh dear god we, that was well, so drawn out you could have just flashed that shit right on the screen and everybody would have been fine with but it but let's let's back up just a bit before five okay. years later okay <laughs> uh so let's at this point um i mean we get we get the trailer from for the most of the movie from i mean i mean for for the first act like after tony's back we get the trailer this is what's happened this is blah 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 now let's go kill Thanos. If if we go get the stones, we could fix this shit. So they're like, all right, let's go kill Thanos. How do we find that motherfucker? And was like, I know where to find that motherfucker. And she was like, check it out. There was this uh, there's this garden. And War Machine's like, oh, cute retirement plan. Well, <laughs> what's he doing on a planet with no defenses and no 
If, like oh well, the, the, then then it comes down to rockets. Like well, there's only been two giant massive waves of cosmic energy. Once when the snap, and then recently, and then they realize that that other snap. What we do find out is the Infinity Stones. He destroyed being them all. Being used again. That's how they're able to pinpoint he, his location. But he used them to destroy themselves. Exactly. And we find that out when Danvers goes down there, and he's like, dude, he's just down there chilling, just shirt cocking it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay. um, I'm gonna ignore that. Uh, but he ain't got no guns. He ain't got no yeah, army. He He's just nothing. like picking pickled peppers. Let's go get this. He's son of cooking a, bitch. a fucking soup. He's making a soup. He's cooking a fucking soup. Yep, just pickled pepper soup. And um. Long story short, gets fucking decapitated he by gets Thor. gets decapitated, because they go in there and they go right for the arm. They cut off the gauntlet. Lesson learned. Like, I like the fact that, you know, they didn't fuck around. They go right for the arm, and then Rocket's like, shit, son, that gauntlet is fucked. And then we see Thanos' face, and he's like, hmm, everything hurts real bad. And then um, he realizes, like, all right, dog, all the stones, they gone. I had to use the stones to destroy the stones, like, because what they have no purpose anymore except for temptation. Not for him. Yeah, yeah, except other than temptation. Like the deed has been done. I gotta just sit around in my farm and shirt cock it. So, <laughs> quit fucking saying that. I watched Deadpool the other day. It's burned in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. And then, uh, without much conversation at all, Nebula like, my daddy don't lie, and they, or Thor's like, for real though, off with his head. Disney beheading. Love it. Um, and everyone's like, well, that's that. Five years later. later. And Black Widow has all types of colors of hair now. Uh, no, no, it's it's just red and blonde. It's just... Uh... I, I'm okay with it. It just doesn't... Whoever her hairdresser it was drunk. That's what it comes down to. She was like, I'm just going to put a bunch of red here, but is it blonde? Did I don't know. She had to consent to that. So was she drunk, the hairdresser drunk, or both? And three friends there to accompany her to tell her it's a good idea. <laughs> and then talk shit about her behind her back. Anyways. <laughs> um, it looked great when it was in the when it was in the little braided uh, ponytail. For a second, yeah. Yeah, for a second, That didn't yeah. last long. No, that didn't last long. That did not last long at all. <laughs> Um, and did you notice that when she hit the bottom, that was not, that was no longer, her hair was no longer done? Well, you know what I was, was looking for? Up. It's because we sat so close to the fucking screen, and my, my, and I wore glasses, and the 3D glasses over top, and I'm like, is she laying on top of Gamora's body? Like, what is, no, it was just her red hair. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, is that blood? No, that's just her red hair. <laughs> yeah. And there's no blonde anymore? Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. What, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, and that, that's one thing is, I will say this, and I'll say it many more times throughout this discussion, there were so many goddamn plot holes out of just sheer convenience. And, and it's like, all, f it's, it's just and, playing to the fans, that's fine. Well, well no, that's not fine. even that, not even that, but like, there are just a lot of plot holes and just random things that seemed like missed editing opportunities, <sighs> and... Oh, can we... Hmm... I'm just going to say, though, overall, even with that, I was still fucking happy with the movie. Oh, no. I am, like I said, I'm not, I don't know if I like this movie, but oddly enough, I know I'm going to watch this movie a bunch of fucking times, just because... I know I will, because I have a bunch of friends who will. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, I don't know if I necessarily don't like the movie. It's just there's a lot of things to digest. And being that I'm somebody that has spent so much time watching all of these movies so many times waiting for this final thing, I don't know if I've had enough time to fully digest it all. So, uh, yeah, it's like I said, I don't dislike it, don't know if I love it, but I'm going to watch it a hundred times. But let's let's carry on with like I guess the the, the storytelling and all like th th at this point it's not necessarily going in order. There's just a bunch of stuff to talk about. Um, one thing I noticed immediately is the first like seven jokes they cracked, I didn't laugh at. Um, well, it's because we've kind of become desensitized, and that's my point. Um, I kind of got a chuckle when they were playing the football thing, and Nebula was like, "I enjoyed that," but more than I laughed, I think. More than anything, I, 
I I was there was so- I was every single moment in here. I think every single team uh, uh, scene. There might have been a moment where even with the comedic show, like I kind of had to. Hold, this movie was so fucking emotional with all of the everything. Oh yeah, going absolutely. On. And they would try to. They try. That's the thing is they try to tone deaf break the emotional moment for a bit of comedic relief, and it works. But it oh, you can't do it as often I as they do it. This... And the thing I think we were watching a video the other day where somebody addressed this, and they said what happened is we became subject to the stark snark. Yeah, and every and it was okay when it's like you know millionaire playboy philanthropist who kind of is an egotistical asshole who's trying to get over himself but and work with Thor a team. God of Thunder is quipping. Yeah, you know it's funny the first few times in Ragnarok she's like oh that's kind of cool but now all of a sudden he's the funny guy and that no that's me- the thing is it's not him it's everybody is the funny guy and it like the guy he's just be- just Hemsworth is actually just better at being the forced to be funny guy yeah because he but, is naturally a funny person yeah but Black Widow Scarlett Johansson is not a comedian yeah she will never be uh, leading a comedy like but uh, Nebula cracked jokes fucking Don Cheadle cracked a joke at some point Don Cheadle is almost forgivable to be a comedian because he's he's such a, 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 well, a broad it, it, actor no, I'm not even it doesn't come down to the actors no. it comes down to the writer it comes down to you don't have to make every single character a comedian trying to make comedic relief in their drastic action or emotion moment you know not everybody has to do that and I think that's where that's where my line is is that it's fine if you do it's fine if you have it but not everybody's gonna have that not every Avenger started out that way, and not every Avenger should end that way. No, and I, 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 I'm 100% behind you on that. I think at this point, like, and honestly, people, to, oh, I'm becoming desensitized. I was like, oh, I'm never going to get desensitized. This I movie, the same thing. No, this movie has proven that I might be coming desensitized. With that being said, I'm not stopping. I'm still going to see them all. I like I, this is this is what I do. Like I mean, this is just a part yeah, no, of no, who this, I that, am. That's your this is your life, and that's how you fulfill your life. Is you know, comics are life. Right. Regardless of bad or not, I'm gonna go see every fucking DC movie that comes out. I'm gonna go see every goddamn. Hellboy should be uh, fucking and movie. And we, we already know what we yeah. think about David Harbour, and it was good. Yes. Yes. Go see that fucking movie. Listen to our fucking podcast on Mila Jovovich sucks, sucks, but everybody else was great. Everybody. Lobster Johnson. And once again, I'm going to say it again. We still aren't even sure that we can blame that on Mila Jovovich. That could just be whoever cast her. Yes. Yes. No, it does come down to casting, I believe. Um, I still enjoy her as a person. I don't, but... <laughs> uh, so, speaking of, like, funny guys and all of that shit, let's talk about the funniest person and the, the only person throughout the whole movie that no matter what, how heavy the situation was, Mark Ruffalo! Fucking Professor Goddamn Hulk had uh, me dying through this whole oh, fucking because, movie. Can we, we talk about his Professor entrance? Hulk. Can we talk about... The Professor Hulk reveal sitting at breakfast and all we see is this over-the-shot view of the biggest bowl of scrambled eggs you could ever fucking imagine. And he's just like, oh yeah, it's confusing times right now. Because we got Ant-Man there at this point. Because like I said, we've, we're fast-forwarding through the fucking trailer. Where, like, and then the, 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 the kids come, come up to him. him and <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, that's exactly what I mean. Like, he's so fucking... Like, Mr. Deeply Disturbed, I don't know who I am, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, is so fucking in tune with himself now. Like, he I'm is Ant-Man. so self-aware. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's Ant-Man. <laughs> yeah, you, the kids come up, you want a selfie? He's like, say green. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Ant-Man's like, so do you want a picture with me? I'm Ant-Man. <laughs> and we get this super awkward pause. Like, and like, like, But the best thing about that awkward pause I'm telling you, it's like Mark Ruffalo learned everything about being a comedian from being standing next to Chris Hemsworth throughout yeah. Thor Ragnarok. Because I'm sorry, Chris Hemsworth is a fucking comedian, but Mark Ruffalo is a not as just a funny person. Because to me, I always thought of him just being as a funny person in real life and not necessarily a comedian. He's just a naturally fucking goofy dude. He's very unaware of himself. Like I don't think he realizes he's fucking famous. <laughs> well, that, that, that's been a meme for a while yeah but. it's no I, and I fully agree with that but the fact is is that 
Professor Goddamn Hulk steals the show for Oh, me. absolutely. And he is Professor Hulk throughout. There's no big transformation. I actually thought we were going to get Worldbreaker Hulk. Like, I thought we were going to get this amazing Hulk Thanos fight. Oh, fuck. We never got a Hulk Thanos fight again. Mm-mm. Fuck. Mm-mm. Fuck up. Because when Thanos gets down to Earth, Hulk fucked up his arm. Yeah. And he's buried underneath the yeah, building. Yeah, he's helping Rocket and or Rocket and, and uh, Ant-Man War, saves War them Machine. All. Yeah. Ant Man saves them yeah. all. I love Ant Man. <laughs> I love Ant Man. But uh, yeah, no. So I, yeah, I gotta say that for all of the, like I said, I was worried when the first like seven fucking jokes didn't land in the first like four minutes of the movie, and then Professor Hulk comes on and I was like, oh, I am gonna be able to laugh for this movie, and I enjoy that, and. I'll be. He delivered every single time. Every single time. And he's like, fucking with the baby thing, he comes back, he's, he'll go grow. <laughs> it was so fucking great. He was like, I want. Uh, and uh, they also, they did something I wanted them to, to stay consistent with, and they kind of did, but they also showed that. All right, let me rephrase that. There's something I wanted them to do and also stay consistent with that they kind of did, and that was that Hulk has big sausage fingers. And they really. When he goes to take the picture is when you really fucking see it, too. Yeah. Like they confirm it. He goes... Because I was starting to think, I was like, how's Hulk going to use but that I'm talking about I'm talking about when they're working on the machines for Ant-Man and when they're working on the time machine. And you have these moments where he's just straight up hitting things. And at first he starts to do it and it's very delicate. And they still show later on when he's working the time machine again that he has to be like... He has to reach down and be delicate yes. because no one wants to see buttons. these giant ma- like no one's that's not believable those hands moving fast on yeah. the typewriter that'll never I don't care how professory you yeah. are you're still fucking Hulk he has to like have some very delicate yeah. hand eye coordination he needs those big keys man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they have the first time he just starts hitting shit it's great and that's really like Kind of seems to be his fix to everything throughout. Like, if it wasn't for Tony Stark... Hulk smash. Hulk smash. But, like, except for that one time when he's, like, super disenfranchised with it. It's just... When they go back in time for that yeah. one second, he was like, oh, I should probably, like, sma- smash some things. Yeah, it's like, Hulk smash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once again, throw a bench. super great Mark Ruffalo delivery is... Yeah. Oh, fuck. So fucking good. Hulk incredibly redeemed this movie because i know a lot of people were pissed about the the not hulk in infinity mm. war oh yeah and getting professor hulk where you know they had learned to exist together after they got their ass whooped by thanos twice is what he said <laughs> yep, yep. They, they had to learn to coexist yin and yang um yes yes and so that to me that wasn't like really the first Oh fuck moment like we're we're getting some new shit because I gotta blame the toy companies that we just it, because of the the lack of whoa shit to the reveal because the toy companies have already put up Professor Hulk shit on accident. Oh really? I follow the toys okay. too, so yeah, I I I, then, I knew then, for a fact Professor Hulk was going to be a thing. But, but I'll say the super nerds are gonna ruin their own things. The super nerds are gonna give themselves spoilers hunting down information information a lot of times. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, for sure. It's just how it I, works. Well, I, I did so good not hunting anything down. It's just that you, you look at toys and Google knows me, and they're like, "Oh, you like this? This is the thing." So Google spoils everything. Um, but uh, the first like, holy fuck, this might be a thing moment that didn't actually come to fruition, but still kind of played a factor in the movie was Jane motherfucking Foster. Jane motherfucking. Foster. Which I think should have been in involved. Asgard. Yeah, should have been involved a lot more. Big but... miss for me. Mm. Big miss. Like that was a swing and a miss because that bitch. They set up the T and they set Jane Foster right there and they put Thor in Asgard meeting with Lady Freya as Rocket is trying to extract some red shit into Jane Foster. I forget what it is. Um, well, it's, it's the it's to one of be the able to get the stones. reality. Yeah, the stone reality is what stone. it comes down to. I just don't the, know what... I forgot what how Jane Foster tied into it is all. It was uh, back during the... It, one of the most hated Thor movies, the... the oh, The Dark World, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I actually it's really the, enjoyed yeah, that the, movie. From I The just, Dark Elves. Yeah. A lot of people hate that movie, but I think it had a lot of cool moments in it. Yeah, they even referenced Nelfheim in there and everything. Yeah, the, the CGI right, yeah. had its bad moments, but I still like it. I love my, my bad CGI, except for Alien 3. We'll talk oh, about yeah, that on yeah. another podcast. <laughs> another day. <laughs> um, uh... 
But yeah, so, you know, that was... But I enjoyed the fact that Jane Foster is still a very viable aspect in this, especially with the huge hint of, you know, bringing in some females into this bitch. I don't think there could be... You think fucking Captain Marvel would be a good idea to be a fucking female lead team? Yeah, go off and do um, uh, um, A-Force or even Alpha Flight. Two movies for give me Jane Foster. What was the team. What, what was the old school Marvel uh, female team? That... Alpha Flight or A Force. Well, I thought there was like the Daughters of Liberty. Oh, I don't know about that, but I think A Force is the no, best. No, there was. It was in a comic book you were reading not too long ago. Really? Yeah. I must. I don't know. I read a lot of comics. We'll go. You back do on read that. a lot of comics. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I think that's. I mean, I. I think yeah, the obvious thing would be. Captain Marvel, but if you're not gonna make Jane, like, they made Jane Foster a big part of this movie without making her a big part of this movie, and to me, like, at this point, I feel like I'm all up in Feige's psyche. Like, about 50% of this movie I predicted that probably shouldn't have been predicted, and I'm okay with that, just because I, I feel like I'm getting into how it works with him. I really think that Jane Foster is about to be some shit in Phase 4. Mainly because of the relevancy of how awesome Jason Aaron is writing Thor and his whole line on uh, Jane I Foster's story. They, they had an opportunity to make things happen with Jane Foster. And that's and that's all because of Natalie Portman being like, I don't know if I want to be a superhero. At, at this point, if you're not, <laughs> you go. At this point, if you're not all about the that superhero, as War Machine would say. Yeah, there's something missing up here, man, because this is clearly, like, the way to be a thing. Like, you want to be relevant? You want to get people that no, don't no, like no, you no, to no. start liking you? No, you can't do that to Natalie Portman, and I'll tell you why. Because people do like Natalie Portman, because Natalie Portman does have a successful career. And, hold on, and because once you are a Marvel superhero, that is what you are branded. I get you, but here's... And that... That, if she is a Marvel superhero, it doesn't matter how much money she makes, it limits how many other movies she can participate in. I, I, I totally get that. And Portman is one that likes to show her butt and her boobs. And Disney's not all about that. So I can understand her for being one that... I, I get it. But to... At the, and especially in the beginning, after Thor 2. Like, if Feige after Thor 2 was like, hey, do you want to be Jane Foster, Mighty Thor? I could see her being like, nah, dog, I'm gonna go, like, fucking scissor Mila Kunis for a bit, and Black Swan. You gotta watch Black Swan. Uh, no, I've seen Black Swan, I just didn't know why that was your first jump, but okay. Um, but now, at this point in time, if Feige were to approach Natalie Portman's and be like, hey, do you want to be Jane Foster, the Mighty Thor? I would imagine that she would have to think a little bit harder about it now. I mean, wouldn't you? Because the last thing she did was Annihilation, and if there was, I mean, reviews were very split. Reviews were split, but I think the thing that... Annihilation, what was wrong with it is it seemed like a huge CGI budget went into it. Oh, yeah. And it didn't get a return on that CGI budget. That's the only thing that really drove it down, is it didn't get that huge return. And there were points where it seemed like... Uh, it seemed like they filmed this at the end, and it was in the middle of the movie, and it was like, you ran out of budget. Yep. You ran out of budget. Well, they got spawned is what happened. Yeah, and it's like your, 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 your whole movie, when you build your whole movie around CGI... You gotta make sure that your CGI stays consistent, and you did not. The bear hybrid, bear, whatever the hell hybrid it was that you know absorbed the people. I have no at eight. fucking idea. It absorbed the people at eight. I it was think. the weirdest movie I've ever seen in but my life. That was that was cool, super cool, and the gore that happened in that moment, super cool with that jaw getting slapped off. But we were talking about Avengers. Yeah, we are. And specifically is, Natalie Portman. Yeah, specifically, my point is, I understand why Natalie Portman does what she does, because she is a successful actress. Regardless of Annihilation, you damn well know she doesn't have to worry about work. No, she's going to be fine. But... 
you want you, you it would have been cool to have her as Jane Foster. And there's a, a little of, bit there, longer. And there's probably a half a dozen actresses that would do a damn fine job being Jane Foster. But I think it would be so great to just like bring her back after all hope was lost. Right. Like that would be the fucking gangsterous thing Disney can do. I think. Like that's. But they're gonna make. What what what's what's gonna happen with Valkyrie then? Valkyries should lead the Asgardians of the galaxy, who they specifically we mention. Named. Yeah. Yes. Bring me the Asgardians of the galaxy. Korg and Meek are alive. Okay, it, throw them on the uh, Gar- kind of Guardians funny, of the Galaxy. Like, I'll take that as a Disney Plus TV show. Seriously, how perfect would that be? A Valkyrie leading the Asgardians of the Galaxy on Disney Plus? They're all about oh, the yeah, fucking no, shows right great. now. Yeah, and great. I think that this movie also set up the Loki show because we get that timeline where Loki gets away with the Cosmic Cube again. I think that's what the whole Loki show is about to be about. We never hear about that again. Well, we do. At one point, I think someone's like, "Where's L- what? What about Loki?" And I'm like. He did get away, but well, that, that's in the exact moment that it happens, though, pretty much. Like we get no more mention of that after that. No, they don't. Not a single fucking mention of Loki Maybe after I was that. Watching something, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're, no you're that, right. that, that, And I think that might be their subtle way of being like, "Here's Loki, like doing his thing in an yeah. alternate universe." Because we are, and it is confirmed, we're getting a Disney Plus Loki series. Like even I think it might be eight, ten episodes, even if it's just one season. If Disney does all their Disney Plus shit as just like ten episodes, single seasons, no continuation, I think that is fucking brilliant because that gives us a way to be able to get a ten-hour movie out of every character and Fair. just complete something. You know, like. Uh, right, but I right, think right. Loki is. Well, I think what it is 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 for those who are really interested in the side story, it allows you to do it without having to invest the huge fucking budget in it that you know you have to do to get it and promote it and get it in theaters and do all that. And it's like, by the way, we can also include more content as it is a serialized thing. You know? Yeah. No, it's it's this is so brilliant. I am so on board with Disney Plus, specifically the Loki show. But yeah, that, that's something I definitely want. Like. What the fuck is Loki doing? Like that's that's once again kind of upset. Like you, I think you did confirm it. They didn't no, touch on it no, again. No, they didn't. Like not, not they, even at the out, end. I don't no, think. No, out of that moment, like not that I remember, but out of that moment, they remarked on it at the moment it happened, like directly after the moment it happened, and that's it. Hmm. That's all you got on it. <sighs> Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. Let's talk about like all the scenarios when they go through time. The scenarios when they went through time were really cool. I mean, I'm going to say... I love the fact that the person who fucked up was Iron Man. Yeah, right. And that going back to the Loki situation. And it was actually more than anything, it was Hulk. <laughs> it was Hulk, yeah. It was, it was well... Well, old Hulk. New Iron Man, or like, few, our Iron Man getting fucked up by old Hulk is what it... He got hulked, is what happened. Right. He gets busted through the door, cosmic cubes go sliding, and Loki's like, whoopsie doodle. And, yeah, diversion fucked. But then they're immediately like, oh, let's go back in time one more time. Because I know where, there's the, where they're both at. Because of same convenience. Place again. And we'll also get, you know, more pin particles, pin particles so we're not limited to convenience. one. We're not limited to. But at the same time, it's like that convenience was also like, ooh, we can, we can play out a convenient plot and also do pandering at the same time. It wasn't like we're doing this to pander. It's like we can make this work and do this also we can get two birds stoned at once you know that my biggest qualm with the time traveling thing does all come down to a matter of convenience because let's go to uh uh what do they call that stupid fucking planet vormir okay let's go to vormir if any other combination of any two characters go in there besides say tony stark and Rhodey. No one else, no other combination of characters works to get the Soul Stone other than Nat and Clint. Because they're the only ones that care enough about each other for it to be the thing they care about most that's still alive. Yeah. Can we talk about fucking convenience there? Like, the back and forth between the two, I enjoyed. I like the fact that it wasn't like, yeah, no, I agree, you die. Yeah. Like I, I liked, I oh, liked no, that no, whole thing. No, no, it was cool. It was, it was like a. But I hate, I hate to, comp- I hate to actually. Are you playing devil's this. advocate? No, 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 okay. no. Hell no. I hate to admit this, but where I actually see that they stole that from was basically wrestling. I'm not fucking kidding. It's like you will no, see that, wrestling matches where 
you know, it's like, oh, he knocks him and he pins this guy, and then he gets up, and then he pins him, and then he gets up, and he pins him, and he gets up, and he pins him. The only difference is, is Red Skull didn't come in with a steel chair. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But it literally seemed like they, literally, I hate that word, but anyways, it seemed like they had taken direct reference from the Vince McMahon playbook. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it. I, I enjoyed that scene. But once again, it was a matter of convenience. And the other thing is, is, why would you send the two motherfucking humans that have never been to space to go to the space planet? When there's all this shit that could be done, like, three stones in New York alone, they're like, let's send the fucking humans with no fucking powers Who's to space? space. Oh, well... <laughs> Hulk's been in space. Can we Iron at least Man's get the scenario where they, like, draw straws and, like, can we get the fucking, at least the straw scene where, like, okay, you guys go here, you guys right, go here. Right, right. Instead, they're like, no, all of like, these scenarios make the most sense. It makes the most sense for the Hulk to go visit fucking uh, the Sorcerer Supreme. That makes the most sense for sure. I'm sorry, the time traveling, I had a major problem. It was very super nostalgic. Like, and I got very emotional through all of the, like, whatevers. Like, there's a lot of whatever moments. Not necessarily whatever moments, but a lot of great bring-back moments of a lot of scenes. Oh, yeah, from, be- the, from the previous movies. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and I, and I, I, specifically the first Avengers in New York is where they're, all three stones just happen to be at that one. We got this infinite fucking galaxy. And in this one specific time, three of these stones happen to be in, in the, one place at the same time. Yeah. Convenience. Um, well, but but, but, but it's, I'm fine with it. It's kind of true if you go back to the no, plots it, of it, those movies. No, it's not just convenience. It's like it's no. It's all well. It's been written for yeah. 22 or fucking whatever. Plus, apparently, well, the I mean, I guess that doesn't make it not convenience though. It still just makes it. It makes it written convenience. Yeah. It's just not forced is all. Like, no, it didn't feel forced. Unlike like they knew things. they were, yeah, they they knew they were going where they were going from the beginning, seemingly. Well, and I'm, once again talking about things that feel forced. I'm sorry. The, I really didn't ever understand the term shoehorned very much. Like I, I got the 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 context behind it and how people use it, but. I never really got the feeling behind it until I saw Brie Larson in this movie. It literally felt like the field, jeez, no, felt no, like they just oh, that was shoved a good her run. in. No, I get you. They, they just shoved her in. It's like, all right, here's a foot, here's a shoe. Let's stick something in between the foot and the shoe. But at the same time, the part she played, and I try, I, I tried to, try to devalidate this. The part she played, the very few scenes that she had. Extremely pivotal. They, 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 All right, well, they, they do. No, hold on. No, l- let me, let me, let me listen to me and let me clarify this. They do not get to Tony otherwise. Be, uh, Rock, and we have to like the the fact is is that if they could have got to Tony otherwise, Rocket would have got there. He knew where his ship was. He just needed someone of a cosmic being to get there. Okay, so without Tony, we all know this movie does not exist. Um, the, the second thing, her departure in, uh, the beginning of act two, her departure being like, I got shit to do that makes a lot of fucking sense to me. There are thousands of planets out there all going through the same bullshit. Like who, why does she need to specialize earth? Like, and, and, and that, this is when war machine is kind of like, well, or no, that, that's not the war machine scene, but, um, what it comes down to is, uh, you know, it's. Where, where were you this whole time when we could have used you now, you know? Yeah, oh, and thank you. You set me up perfectly there. And she was like, well, they didn't have the Avengers. And that right there, that yeah, was a very redeeming... Yeah, there's all these other planets and they don't have the Avengers. And that was a very redeeming line for me. Like, I thought that was, that was a line that... I was like, you know what? You made everybody all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden you're like... Uh, Everybody in the room was like, hey, she might be a bitch. Who's this new chick just coming in here, like, flexing and shit? And she kind of like strokes them. She's like, yeah, but they didn't have you guys. And they're like, you know what? Yeah, she's right. You go fight all of them. Save all them other planets. We're going to focus on Earth. And I, I just because of that line, the way it was written, I found her, once again, her character to be redeeming. Because if her character was not put into this movie perfectly, 
could have ruined the movie completely. But we also know that she's not the only superhero force that roams the galaxy. We do know that. Well, okay, we don't know that for the MCU. I uh, I have to give that... Yeah, for no. what we know of comics is always different from what we know of the MCU. And I know where you're going with this, and we're going to touch on that at the end. Okay. Um. Yeah. And um, really, and her... Her and but I will give you yes the the reasoning and the logic were good and her I, absence yes. made a lot of sense too. Her absence made a lot of sense, but it really just did just feel like we shot these and really intended for her to be around more, and then realized she wasn't received well, and we cut her out of a lot. And not even necessarily received well because it's very split. Like there was a lot of people that. She, I mean, no, because when she showed up on screen, there were literally three people who clapped in the theater, as opposed to every other character appearance. I, I totally get that. That's like, a, not a very split theater. Well, not necessarily our theater, but I mean, I'm, I'm talking about after Captain Marvel itself, okay. like after the movie, like everything gotcha. seemed pretty split to me, at least through my, like very split. But we had people applauding for just about every single every character appearance. Every fucking thing I heard clapping for. Except for her. Except for a couple of... A couple of people, yeah. Yeah, there were like two or three. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people, I mean, mostly with her entrance, like we said in the beginning, with like, her, she saved Tony. Like, I think everyone like predicted it. So, yeah. It because everyone like, yeah. saw that being as a thing, like it wasn't a great reveal. And I can't take that as a jab at Brie Larson. That no. is not her fault. I don't, once again, just like with, you know, Mila Jovich, I don't like her, but I cannot poke at her for things that are not her fault right i cannot get mad at her for things that she didn't that that she's not responsible for the direction she's not responsible for the writing the the unicorn store is a whole nother a whole nother ordeal you know what i will say though as i thought she was just fine in this movie i thought she i thought she was way, a way better version of captain Absolutely. captain marvel than Absolutely. She, because a lot of people that, can like, argue that, like, oh, she was in the 90s. She was coming into herself. I was like, nah, because she was all stoic, and then all of a sudden she gets her powers, and she's like, oh, yeah. I'll honestly all admit I that, it, like, there was one point where I looked at her, and I was like, she's actually kind of attractive. Well, yeah, yeah that's beyond the point. No, 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 but that's the thing. It's like, she is a major oh, because, turnoff for me physically oh, as a person. And there was one point, and I was like, wow, you actually can have an attractive side to you and it was i think a lot of it had to do with the way she came on screen and to me the the the, the very the moment that i realized i like her is when she sees spider-man spider-man's holding the gauntlet and she comes down and <laughs> he's like i'm peter parker she's like hey peter parker you got something for me like just the way she said it i was like oh shit i kind of teared up a little bit like <laughs> <laughs> is that a dog? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a dog at first. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I was like, you know what? I think I like Captain. Yeah, no, Marvel. that was a that was a very good scene. I liked that. Yeah. I liked the direction, and I actually liked her delivery. It was like, oh, you're not a plank. But this is what happens next. <sighs> Spider Man has the greatest, greatest, um, uh rebuttal to her you got something for me he goes yeah i just don't know how you're gonna get through all that then we get the might as well have been a fucking led zeppelin bump it a dump we get our girl power moment starting with valkyrie coming down oh her yeah the very forced girl power moment well but I, it didn't last that long and that's what makes me think that kevin feige is so fucking brilliant because he gave us he something wants to test the water he's testing the waters there uh, people like you or I, um, being dudes, we don't, like, it doesn't appeal to us. Well, it's not even that being, being a dude, it doesn't appeal to me, because obviously I don't give a shit about half the shit that was in Alita, but it was a good movie. Yeah, no, it's, and that it's, was, it's all, yeah. No, but I, here's the thing, um, what, it, what felt where it was just so forced there was that for the majority of that fight, which had been going on for at that point nearly 20 minutes half an hour like it had been going on for a while and we had made we had seen the characters that they showed however the ones who had actually gotten like real screen time were scarlet witch dude that oh. nebula uh valkyrie and we got some pepper pots as rescue but those those four out of what a group of nine were the ones that we had seen, and these others just like, yeah, we're here. And it's like, 
Uh, Valkyrie was fucking some shit up. She had a great moment. Oh, no, fucking Valkyrie Spider-Man. was fucking She great. had a great moment. Well, that's what, what I'm saying. Those four characters were the ones that were, you know, fucking shit up, and we got to see them fuck shit up. And the others were just kind of like, uh, we need some extra. Let's sprinkle it in there. Yeah, we didn't really get to see any Shuri action after the Russos went on to say that Shuri's the smartest character in the MCU. Right. We got one blast from Shuri. That is all I counted. I right. saw her fire a blaster one time. And you know what else really pissed me off about that scene? It was fucking Drax. We got one fucking Drax moment. I'm sorry. This pisses me off. No, like... One fucking Drax moment? What? Fuck you, Russo brothers, for being pissed off for him standing by fucking James Gunn. For not giving Drax... Dave Batista the fucking screen time he deserves. He uh, got Batista, one moment. We got a uh, we got a Drax stab. All of the Drax we see from then on out. Yeah, that pisses me off. Mm. And Batista, Batista does deserve it. more. I will give you that. that like, he's, I he's, would he's... watch a Batista fucking solo movie. I oh, would. Yeah. I would watch that movie all goddamn day. I would watch Batista's origin. I would watch his wife not dance and him fall in love. <laughs> I would watch that whole fucking thing. Fact is. There was a lot of redeeming moments. There was a lot of non-redeeming moments. Let's get back to the girl powers scene, though, because we kind of got off. Do we have to? No, well, the fact that... And that just kind of ties back into it, is what I'm saying. Like, all revolving it back around with the redemption moments in the final battle scene. Is it wasn't... It wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. At first, when it came up, I was like, oh, shit, I was excited. And now I'm... This is me... Us, personally. I'm, I'm sure I could speak for you on this as well. We both had this level of excitement that was at peak. And then we got that great moment where Carol Danvers delivers probably the best line that Carol Danvers has delivered in her MCU stint. What? Hey, Peter Parker. Yeah. And well, then, let's talk about the then, fucked up, yeah. stupid ass Carol Danvers entrance that we got that just kind of changed the mood for me for a whole fucking five minutes. Or she just her out of nowhere blasts through and yes. destroys Thanos' ship. The re-entrance back into the battle. Because like I said, she was off fighting some shit. I'm, I'm going to hit it now. Deal. I'm going to hit it now. Uh-oh. I've been drinking a little bit. I'm going to hit it now. This is... I'm, I apologize also. This is why I'm not changing camera angles right now. Is because I'm actually, like, really drinking to talk about this. Sorry. Um, but let's, let's, let's address this. Carol Danvers... And once again, this is not a stab at Brie Larson... This, this is, is a the stab. character of Car- Carol Danvers. Yeah. yeah, this is a stab at writing for Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, is out roaming the universe, taking care of these thousands of planets. And once again, we're talking about, yes, I understand we have to separate the MCU from the comics. But that is very hard to do when you have a character who is telling you that out of, you know, going and taking thou- taking care of thousands of planets, there is not going to be one single person on those thousands of planets who is also super powered and also capable of saying, hey, I want to help you come take care of Thanos. I can fly and I can travel in space too. Yes. So with that being said, I'm going to segue right into I know what you're talking about. The, the 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 giant the biggest thing they could have done was bring in a new character at this point. Yes. She comes back with someone. Yeah. Because she came back empty handed. She though. said it herself, like in the very beginning, she's like, Oh, I know where Thanos could be, I know people and the right. but Nebula's like, Oh no, but I know exactly where he's at. She could have used that same, oh I know people. Like to me, I thought that was her setting up like I'm gonna bring a motherfucker back. Right. Right, right. But no. she brought no one back no. with her. Except for her unheadable, unheadbuttable self, which yeah. I thought was dope. Yeah, the, the, okay, <laughs> that I, was like, fucking dope. As <laughs> much as I wanted to criticize it, I actually thought it was really cool. It's like, ah, uh, but she is that op. Yeah, she is. That's that. That is Captain. The, like, I just, I just had to say, man, she I is just, that op. I really wanted to see Professor Hulk at least give one more. Oh fucking yeah, swing at Thanos. But he man. fucked up his whole arm no. using the gauntlet, which. <sighs> Man. That was great. I like the fact. Let's talk about Hulk. You know what? Let's talk about Hulk holding the gauntlet for a second. Did anybody see the like? A lot of people are like Nebula's gonna hold the gauntlet. Gamora's gonna have a gauntlet somehow because of time. We travel. saw them fucking hold it too. We saw a them lot of people held a ga- Black the Panther held a gauntlet. Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, lots of people carried and held the gauntlet and never used it. Spider Man. 
had a fucking but gauntlet. There was a reason for that. And the reason was that they established at the very beginning when they built the new gauntlet, they said, well, not even just the new beginning, but they established with Thanos that it nearly killed him to use the gauntlet. And that's why the Hulk was the first one to be like, because I got he said, that said, it's shit. gamma radiation. I got it. Yeah, I, I got, got it. it. Like, Tony, you could just, like, put your fire extinguisher out of my arm when it's all said and done. Which he does. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, essentially, that is what breaks open the third act, is Hulk putting on the gauntlet. He re-snaps everybody back. And, but before everyone, before, this is, this is brilliant directing here, is it doesn't sink in that everybody's coming back. Like, we right. get the Hawkeye call, and we're like, okay, everybody's back. But then all of a sudden, we realize that Nebula's infiltrated the system. Nebula probably being the biggest part of this entire movie. If it well, wasn't for like, Nebula being a part of this movie, Thanos never invades. And well, uh, I think that's almost... It's almost fan servicing trying to say, like, listen, we did want to do the, you know, Nebula gets the gauntlet story, but we knew we couldn't go with that. But she, instead, we're just going to make her still the biggest catalyst of this. Exactly. Time. Like, she is as important as Tony Stark is to this movie. And I, I fucking loved Nebula's without character Nebula, we get throughout no third the entire, act. throughout the entire movie. We get no third act without Nebula. No. It ends with Hulk snapping his fingers. And, I mean, let's talk about where Nebula is actually confronting herself. And has to kill herself? Yeah. She kills herself? To, to like, I was waiting for some, like, back to the future shit to happen for a second. Like, oh, no, 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 but they already explained that's not how time that's, works. Yes, and I like that they specifically explain that back to the future and Bill and Ted's excellent adventure and every other and time. They basically explained to him, and they said, oh, it's bullshit, but they explained to us that it is very much the Dragon Ball Z way of doing it, which is. God, I hate it that I referred to it that way. But, anyways, it, it is. As far as we're going with media, it is the Dragon Ball Z way of doing it. You create a separate timeline. You create an alternate dimension when you screw with things. The original continues to go on, but you created a new branch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so when you go back to your original, it's it's going to be your original timeline. But as we had with the, the Mark Ruffalo at the Sanctum scene, uh, what, is the, what is the name of... Her, uh, Tilda Swinton, the yeah. ancient one. Yeah, the, the ancient, ancient one. Yeah, yeah. But, she is the sorcerer supreme at that point. In time, okay. Though. Yes, but uh, so when we have um, Bruce and the ancient one talking, and she basically tells him, "You take our stone, you're just dooming this dimension." And that right there, I love that the Russos were at least okay enough to pay enough attention to time travel and details in that sense. Yeah. To because honestly, if they do that, like. Well, for and a they, second, I, I was how like, it "Hit Bruce too." He was just like, "Oh." But but they finally maybe were able he to was like, wrong then. Yeah. But who? Strange. <laughs> and then that's when she was like, "Oh shit, Strange did what?" Yeah. And that's when she was like, "Oh, you could have this time stone." Like Strange is supposed well, to be also, the greatest version of all of us. Well, so and that's, that's the thing that tells me that like what we saw with Strange in Infinity Wars, where he's doing the meditation and viewing the different timelines, she's done that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as soon as he arrives, he's like, I'm looking for Strange. He's like, oh, yeah, no, he's, like, performing surgery. You're five years too early. Yeah. He's like, what do you hear? She's like, what are you here for? He's like, oh. What's that, around your that, neck? That, actually. And then, boom. And he's, like, for a second, you think you're going to get a Hulk versus Ancient One fight. But all of us know how that goes. Yeah. And that, it, it went exactly it, how it should It went exactly went. how you knew yeah. it was going to go. I'm sorry, dude. I did not think that I would be so stoked on the Ancient One because I wasn't a huge fan of the doctor strange movie the first couple times i watched it i loved it until the until this uh, the universe progressed i i wasn't a fan of it i don't know i'm kill this off yeah go ahead but um now I, I i can go back and watch doctor strange with so much joy a lot of it has to do with the ancient one and i love the fact that they brought her back in this like tilda swinton she's like she's a pretty fucking busy bitch oh yeah like she was, is was the, she the shit one that played uh the was she the one that played the the archangel in uh, Constantine? Possibly. Pretty sure she is. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. No. She's ah. Oh, she's awesome. She's got range too, man. But uh, yeah. No. She played a major part in the movie, but very brief. I was a little disappointed to not see her on the battlefield, but time travel says that she's dead. Yeah. Because she dies in Doctor Strange. Yeah. Exactly. But. I mean, so I guess I'm. I, it would have been something Can for me to bitch at. Can we address the battlefield? At. Can we address that? Let's talk about the battlefield. All right. So when we like one, 
all the cool shit we all know. Captain America, gush, 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 gush awesome, you know, whatever. We, but, well, let's. Uh, but bypassing that for just a moment, I have to complain about the portals. Because we get all these portals, and it's like, ooh, buddy, we're going to get to see some stuff we haven't seen yet. We're going to get to see some stuff we haven't seen yet. No, we... I mean, it's cool. It's like, oh, yeah, we got all the reinforcements of everybody who came back, but nobody knew. Nobody that we haven't seen, and that was the thing I was really hoping for. I, I fought myself on that same thing. I went back and forth. I was like, all right, if there would never be a better opportunity, besides the fact to of Captain... Just, Cap just besides shove Captain, some characters in right now. Right, or, or Captain Marvel coming down from space with, say... Richard fucking Ryder. I'm going to talk a lot more about that later. The fact is, is they missed two opportunities on the battle scene, or battlefield, to bring us some new shit. I thought for sure we were going to see a fucking Squirrel Girl. I really did. Oh, man. And yeah, if, I you're, if you're going to do your A-Force shit, you better have some Squirrel Girl. Or, or how about Thanos is on the battlefield? Let's, like, little fucking fan play. Let's throw some Squirrel Girl in there. Like, she doesn't have to be the one to defeat Thanos. No. But why not? Why the fuck not? She's going to be in Phase 4. If she's not in Phase 4, Feige bumped his fucking head. They would total fuck up if you don't bring her in Phase you 4. You weren't even a fan of Squirrel Girl until War of the Realms, really. No, I've always been a fan of Squirrel Girl. Oh, really? Girl. Oh, no, I've always been a fan of Squirrel Girl. I've never been a fan of the Squirrel Girl comic. Oh. I've always been a fan of the Squirrel Girl character. Character, yes. but not the comic yes. itself. Yes, Okay. Yes. I'm... I I remember things you say, just maybe not the way you say them. We talk. We say a lot of words, buddy. We do say a lot of fucking words. <laughs> um, you know, the battlefield was there, there really were a couple of missed opportunities. A lot of missed opportunities. All right, so I, I've said. I, I guess I gave one character off the top of my head. Who would you have thrown in? Never been seen before. Surprise! Boom! Now a part of the MCU. Very viable character. Doesn't have to be a oh, but this would never. What? Just off the top of your head. Off the top of my head. Yeah. Fantastic Four and the Silver Surfer. You would have just brought the Fantastic all Four them. in? All of them. See, I, I, I would have brought the Fantastic Four in. Uh, uh, no. See, I think the Fantastic Four needs brought in proper. I, I, think, I, I think don't think there's no way in hell that Tony Stark doesn't know that Reed Richards exists. Fair. Okay. So I'm going to give you a second chance at that. I mean, we all want to see Fantastic Four coming through that portal. And I think every single person out there had the slightest, like, this This is, are we going to see a fucking, like, I want to see Flame On fly through there. Like, right. I, I thought it was going to... Well, and it's, it's, it's logically, I get it. There shouldn't be people that they have never heard of. So we're going to talk, no, no mutants, no Fox characters whatsoever. Like, uh, you cannot uh, have mutants, cannot have Fox characters. Who's coming through that portal that's what, next to Squirrel Girl? Next to Squirrel Girl? Do we bring in Daredevil and Luke Cage and the Defenders? Wow, yeah, because I mean, they, that's that's my second yeah, choice. They, they, they really, do we bring in fucking <laughs> Punisher? Like that, that that was my next jump. Was do we really bring in Frank Castle, or do we bring in someone that's never been seen, like a total fucking wild card? I, I, I missed opportunities is the point here. Oh well, yeah, lot, lots of missed opportunities. I will admit to bring in the wild card, but at the same time, I will give them the small thing of. I would have been criticizing you just like I criticized you for shoehorning in Captain Marvel in the beginning scene. No, but they wouldn't play a part that you just see him in the distance on the battlefield just for a second. Oh, so we're going like Onslaught. Uh, if you've ever read the Onslaught comics, you get a lot of characters that are just like, off in the distance, everybody's here. That, that's what I'm talking about. Like, way over there. In the distance, you see a bunch of squirrels like taking down Proxima Midnight or something like that. Right. Like, who's your character? Who's my character to see off in the distance? Not Fox, no Fox characters, no mutants. That's, that's the thing, is like most of my favorite characters are gonna be You're mutants. You're gonna have to fucking narrow it down then, buddy. Most of my favorite characters are really gonna be mutants. Oh, man. There's some good ones. There are, but... I mean, you could even, like, throw in the... Take the low-hanging fruit and say Deadpool. Like that? No, Deadpool would not be. Once again, Fox character. Yeah, but Deadpool would not be who right. I threw in there. I broke my there. rule. Um. Fuck. Yeah, man. 
I would have liked, liked to have seen Loki on the battlefield. I think that would have been cool. That would have been interdimensional cool. Interdimensional Loki just off in the distance that somewhere. That would have been cool. Come on. Um, but we're talking still, I'm never still, I'm been seen. I'm trying to think no mutants. I'm really mm-hmm. trying to think. Never been seen, mentioned. But I, I'm going to say in... I'm going to say when it's Infinity War, like especially in the comics, we see some villains team up. I think it would have been cool. Well, once again, in our new MCU, we don't have a Doc Ock. No, we don't have it. I, I will allow you to say Sony verse though, because that is still technically the Marvel verse. Okay, but really the Spider verse is. I well, mean, it's also though Strange can do interdimensional things. That would have been cool to have a whole bunch of characters that just aren't our dimension, anyways. To me, my second viable option would have been Venom. Like, Venom flying in from San Francisco. This is where Spider-Man first gets his first glimpse of Venom in the background. I think that would be a cool way. It has nothing to do with the comics. I know people that are like, oh, that's not how they... Yeah, because, I mean, that's where I immediately go. And But I have to keep reminding myself. MCU, comic universe, MCU. Right, yeah. And it's a comic whole... universe. <laughs> exactly. Tom Hardy is a thing as fucking Venom right now. I think it would be cool to see, like, oh shit, I gotta go fight some shit real quick. Fucking, uh, all of these people just turned to dust in Fran- San Francisco. You know, it's, I don't know. The, what, would, what would you have done if you saw Madcap off in the distance? distance? I would have pooped. <laughs> I would have pooped the theater. <laughs> some slapstick. Any of that shit. If they would have brought in any of the mercs for money, Stingray, any of them, I would have pooped. The fact is, if they would have brought in anybody new at all, at all, no matter how minuscule of a per- character they are, yeah, it's just a missed opportunity. I I did not get I did not get nearly as excited throughout this movie like I did Infinity War. I had more emotion through this movie, like more like ah oh, fuck, it's coming to an end. Like oh fuck, they're seeing each other for the first time in this long. Like, it was more tears than joy throughout this movie. Right. More like, holy fuck, this just happened. The only, th- the really, the big times had to do with hair. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Captain Marvel's hair. I was like, oh, they did it right. And then Thor with his fucking goddamn Nordic beard. Oh, oh he, when he it gets, gets braided. braided. Yeah. Oh, he gets his two hammers. Let's talk about hammers for a second. Oh, man. Okay. They, they really did know how to pander, at least to me. With the the two hammers, when he gets his hammer and he's standing there with his mother in the past and Rocket, and I was just like, "What are you doing?" And his mother even says, "It takes a minute sometimes." I'm still worthy. <laughs> tear, tear should have been a moment of joy. Oh yeah, a tear for me. Like that's the thing. That's I think that's why I'm I'm so on the fence on to whether or not I like this movie. I think as being a fucking dude, I'm like I cried too much for three hours. <laughs> well, that that would be one criticism I have of the movie is that Thor cries a lot. Well, yeah. Thor cries a lot. But he also is still trying to be very funny. It's just that his jokes don't land because he's trying. Like his but emotion they're forcing plays. him. I, it's very obvious that they're forcing him. Like, I don't don't get me wrong. I actually don't have a problem with Fat Thor. Uh, yes, we should. I, I think some people should be healthy, but you know, whatever. Well, I don't have a problem with Fat Thor in the movie just because it's a showing that he's not healthy right now. And when you are not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be emotionally healthy either. You're not going to be mentally healthy. And so now I've negated every problem that I have with crying Thor because it's really just showing how you are when you don't take care of yourself. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Fuck. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, Marvel and their fat jokes. They'll, they'll, they'll be nice about everything except fat people and fat shaming is a bad thing. I'm sorry. Fat jokes are funny. Just like dudes getting kicked in the fucking balls. I'm sorry. Every he, he, time. Was, he was the dude. He was Lebowski. He was. Yeah. But that is... The reason he is fat in that scenario is because he's sad. He's not taking care of himself. He's running away from his it's, problems. It's much more than a joke is what you're trying to say. This is much more than it's a fat joke. This is much more this, than a it's, This it's, is not a it's fat symbolic. joke. symbolic. Yeah, this is saying, no, dude, he became fat because he lost. It doesn't matter that he killed Thanos. 
in killing Thanos, he didn't gain anything. No one came back. He didn't get his life back. He thought revenge was going to close it for him because he told Thanos in Infinity Wars, I am going to kill you. You want to talk about low points? He's playing Fortnite with Meek and Korg. Right. Low points, bro. Low, low points, exactly. <laughs> that just shows you, like, and if I want to find fault with something, I'd find fault with basically showing that gamers li live in a world of ignoring reality and trying to live in their little hobbit hole. Dude. And you know what? I'm one of those guys. I am a gamer. I'll do that. And I accept it. And it really does just show, like, you... You hit those points sometimes where you are avoiding reality and you're using everything around you to avoid what has happened. And you have no choice but to really, I mean, you have a choice, but you should be making the choice to confront it. And I think that's one of the things they're trying to hammer home with Thor. Sorry, that's just, and they also kind of hammer home throughout the movie that, Sorry, once you've done that, once you've gone down that road, you may have done some irreparable damage to your body and your mind. And yeah, because it's not like Thor's, like, lean, mean, fighting machine at the end. No. no he's still chubby Thor. He's And he's still out of shape, no matter how much he gets into it. He's not as get back up as he was originally. No, he's still fat faced Guardian of the Galaxy. I like that he's a Guardian of the Galaxy now. Can we yeah. talk about yeah, that yeah, for a second? Guardian of the Galaxy is fucking great. All right. So we know we're Sorry getting that we got serious three. about like body issues, but it's a thing. Yeah, no, seriously. Like the uh, why, the reason I specifically wanted to touch on that is because I see a lot of people. I see a lot of shit post articles going. Marvel's still making fat jokes. Well, you know what? You know what they did do? They put a they put their first openly gay character in the movie. They did. Yes, they did. With a uh, Russo brother himself playing the fucking cameo. Mm -hmm. So, fuck you. They're progressing. It can't all be at once. Fat people aren't necessarily the healthiest people in the world. I'm going to say it bluntly. Um, and I think that Thor was the perfect, the perfect metaphor to get that across. To get well, that across because uh, surface he came level, from it's a joke. God. And it's basically showing anybody can fall. Yeah, exactly. Anybody can fall. Odin was fat. Yeah. Matt, Odin was fat. I said it. <laughs> but Thor's fat is he came from being the strongest Avenger. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show. Yeah. It to, shows a lot. You know, he wants. And, and maybe that's another message they're trying to convey is, you know, depression is a real thing. Once you hit depression, you do things to your body that you normally wouldn't do. You engage in habits that you normally wouldn't engage in. Yeah. Thor likes beer. But does Thor just sit around the house drinking beer? No, that's not his life normally. But that's what it became. Yeah. Yeah, no, it very much is. The fact that there is beer on the ship is what gets him to uh, become to an Avenger. Leave, yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, I can keep evading reality? Awesome. I can keep, I can stay drunk. Even when he goes to Asgard, he's yeah. like, oh, there's the, the distillery, it's the finest. He's trying to stay drunk and avoid reality, and sorry, they're not really fat shaming. They're saying... They're almost saying that alcoholism destroys your body, really. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it really is, so thank you. Surface level jokes, hilarious. Deep down, get your shit together is what right? Marvel's trying to say. Um, uh, I want to stay on the version. There's a speculation, though. Yeah, so yeah, what the fuck do we know? We're not doctors. No. We're not experts on the well, subject. We didn't write the fucking movie. <laughs> That's true. Um, I want to stay on the subject of hammers, though. Mm. How about... Sorry, I distracted you way away from no, the hammers and no, we no, talked about fine. fat shaming. Uh, <laughs> uh, more than one person holds a hammer in this story. Oh, and that, like, we all knew it. Because they've avoided it through multiple movies where it's like... Since the first, or since like, uh, the Age of Ultron. Yeah, we have avo avoided it. And we all knew Cap was worthy. All of us knew it. We all knew deep down. I contest to that. Captain, not... A half an hour before he picks up that uh, hammer, steals three times. He steals. Now, I don't say that I contest to um, him being able to pick up the hammer. I'm going to get a little controversial here and bring it into religion. With the Ten Commandments being thou shalt not steal, 
but he's able to still pick up a hammer after literally just stealing. If you're going with Nor if you're going with religion, you have to remember they don't go against by Christian religion. It's Nordic. No, what I'm trying to do is give a jab at a certain group for a second. Okay. <laughs> it's uh not necessarily a jab, but just maybe open your eyes for a second. If Captain America is deemed worthy, and only one other person in the entire universe is deemed worthy, next to him. And just seconds before he's able to wield this hammer, literally goes against the Ten Commandments like three times in a matter of a minute. Kind of makes you, kind of makes you wonder for a second. Uh, it's, uh, it just made me think, made me think with the whole stealing thing. Uh, uh, but every time he stole, it was in interest of saving an entire universe. I get it, and that's exactly what brings me back around to this whole like. Uh, we, we are not going to get into an ends justify the means discussion. Well, and that's way deeper than you or I want to go. No, and I think that is the point of the whole, the the whole thing. You summed it up right there. Is the fact that because of ends justify the means, that not necessarily everything is. Uh, once again, a it's huge metaphor. Black and white, a huge is metaphor is it's what not I'm, black and white. Another is all you're uh, uh, segues in not necessarily with Thor and the fat joke as it does but now bringing in Hammer and Captain America. Fucking once again, I know I put my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the. Uh, I, I just think it's a great metaphor that the Russos tied in there. It's very subtle. Like uh, if, uh, to me, surface level, yeah, it's fan service. We all knew that Cap was eventually going to hold a hammer, right? And, and I will say that those moments when we get to the fight where it's really Cap and everybody fighting, they if there's one thing that they did well, it's that in that fighting and the direction of the fighting and the choreography and the entire way that that scene flowed, up until Captain Marvel comes in. Once again, not blaming Brie Larson, even though I have a personal problem with her. Um... Everything in there made me forget the flaws in the movie that occurred beforehand. Everything in there made me forget the the plot holes that I was seeing. It did the job of going, no, we're, we're finally getting to the pew pew bang bang punch punch, you know, kapow. And the pew pew bang bang punch punch kapow was perfectly delivered. No, yeah. no. It wasn't overdone. It was there when it needed. I like the fact that, and we got the fan service that we wanted it for the most part. I like. I really like the fact that there was a moment on the battlefield where, like, Thor's like, "You take the little one," and they're like, "Yeah." Hey. That was <laughs> once again, though. That's us. Also, that, that's one of the things I kind of tried to point out earlier, though, is that's the Stark snark. That is, we're doing a tone deaf comedy moment in the middle of an epic moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get you. And once again, it was one of the few comedic lines that did actually connect with me. Right. Uh, I personally it's just was one not... of the things that shows we need moderation. I get it. No, I, I I agree completely. Personally, myself, I was not a fan of Cap wielding the hammer until Thor goes, "I knew it." When Thor says, yeah. "I knew it," I was like, "All right, I'll accept." But in that initial moment where that hammer comes back, mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't going to Thor. As soon as that hammer lifts, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. No. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Stop it. Stop it. It's too much. And then it happens, and I'm like, ah. Oh. And I will also say that that is the only part of the movie that was spoiled for me. Fuck you who did that to me. I knew that I knew that Cap was going to wield the hammer. Oh, really? Going into it, somebody spoiled it for somebody you. Somebody fucking spoiled it oh. for me, and I hope I, I fucking hope he's. Dude, listening. if only you had gotten to see Jeremy's reaction to that shit. I wish I would have. Oh man, it was like I'm sitting and I'm look, I'm on my, I'm on the edge of my seat looking at the screen because it's kind of like, yeah, good CGI, good action, and then out of the corner of my eye, when the hammer goes to Cap, I just see Jeremy go. Oh, it's so great. My reaction was like just letting you guys know it was a buddy's birthday, and so yeah. it was really good to you know get to see how he reacted to this, and get to see him have a being good time. The biggest Captain yeah, America being one of the fan biggest Captain Marvel, yeah. uh, Captain Marvel, Jesus no, Captain America fans that there is. He it was really cool to get to see his reactions to that. Yeah, um, I mean, I think what could be a better birthday present than End you game know, coming out on your birthday? Exactly. Yeah. Seriously, what a way to fucking yeah. No, it's. 
I, 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 don't, I don't know if my distaste for the scene was because of the spoiler, mm. but once again, immediately redeemed when the... I'm sorry, Chris... With the Chris, combos he fucking pulls well, off? No, with Chris, Chris Hem, or Thor's line of, I knew it. Oh. And it's not necessarily the line, as the look on his face of joy. Uh, yeah. It's joy, like, that I'm There's someone it. who's actually, yeah, <laughs> worthy, just, just like me. me. Yep. And but, the, oh my god. No, the, the combos he pulled off after it was what sold it for me. It was just like... like I've got two weapons that come back to me. Nope. Two boomerangs. Whoop bam, whoop bam, whoop bam, bam, whoop bam, bam. And he even <laughs> takes the hammer to go back in time to replace the stones, too. Yeah. Now, question I have for you. Where the fuck is that hammer? Where, where is it when he hands the shield over to Falcon? Yeah, he should have brought that hammer back with him. And it's not there. Yeah, so that's a question that I'm not sure about. Maybe he had to leave. No, you don't leave that in time. No. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fact is that Cap's old. He ain't a thing anymore. But he really, that scene does set up what pretty much indicates there is confirmed to be a Phase 4 that doesn't necessarily oh, all pertain to X-Men and Fantastic Four. We're going to have Sam Wilson donning Skipping the Bucky shield. and going straight to Sam. Uh, it's, it's better. It's, okay, just, a, it's just a better I'll accept it for what it is. I like, I, I like Bucky better as Winter Soldier. And I like knowing that Disney Plus is putting out a Bucky and Falcon show. Makes to me tells me that I think that is going to be a lot of events that happened pre Endgame. So you know, just like it's, I think that all the the, the shows are going to be stuff that just happened all before Endgame. Yeah, and it would it would probably be a lot. I would just say too much screen time and too much time taken up if we did do the transition between Bucky and then Sam. Yeah, it's not necessary because I think really Disney Plus has it in the bag by just explaining that throughout whatever the show may turn out to be, the dynamic between the two is just going to better resolve the fact that even like Bucky, when like the two first show up to see Old mm -hmm. Man Cap, it's not Bucky that goes up to him. Bucky looks at Falcon and he's like, no, you say what's up. So you know that throughout their friendship over time, they have developed this camaraderie where, like, yeah, no, Falcon, you are the better man, the more worthy person right, in right. this scenario. So, yeah, I, I really respect that. At least I'm really counting on Disney Plus to, uh, to, to deliver that in that fashion. So I, I, I like how they set up Phase 4, but to me, the, the, the biggest thing wasn't necessarily the very end of the movie so much as it was the end of Tony. And this is the one thing that I said at the beginning. Like, everyone was like, oh, Tony's going to die in Infinity War. And even when he got stabbed, I remember all 80 of you motherfuckers looking over at me like, what's Brian's reaction going to be? <laughs> and I was like, he cool. And he was cool because I know he's going to die in this movie. I knew that that final, like, this is one of the things I had. I was like, fuck, I was right about the end. Right. Like, I... <laughs> And I guess it, there were so many theories floating around out there. You piece them all together, something's going I, to make sense. I kind of gathered it really... Like, I gathered it towards the end, in the moment where uh, Tony and Strange, Strange. Yeah, are talking, all, and he yeah. says, if I told you what it was, it wouldn't happen. Yep. And I was like, oh, fuck, you're going to die. And then as soon as uh, fucking Thanos throws Captain Marvel off, and you realize, oh, shit, the gauntlet's happening. Like, right. You don't necessarily see Tony make eye contact with Strange, but you see Strange clearly looking mm -hmm. over in Tony's direction, and I feel like he even put out like the number. No, he one. put up one. He like, yeah. So, but you don't see like you, Tony's clearly fixated on Thanos, not Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. I just found it very, very ridiculous that Doctor Strange had to be like, "This is the one." Like what? Did you really have? Is that a spell? Did you just cast no, no, a spell? No, no. He's telling him this is the one. But he's not telling him anything because Tony's not no, paying I'm attention. No, I'm pretty sure he looked. I'm pretty, I don't think he no, did. No, I'm pretty I, sure he looked. I don't know. I have to uh, go we back we and can agree to it. disagree on that yeah. one, but I'm pretty sure he looked, and we'll have to go back and see it in the theaters to see it. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it was telling him this is the one possibility. This yeah. is the one. You you could be right. I mean, no, we can't say for sure because. Uh, and I, I think that was meant more or less to just kind of reaffirm whatever you're thinking is right. Yeah, because you could see Tony really thinking, like, is this what I got to do? Yeah. Because, it's, I mean, we already know that Tony Stark's tech can obtain the, the fucking Yeah, it, it could stones. absorb it because, I mean, it is his tech. It would just blend was, right it, in with he the made suit. It, yeah, he made it so that the tech... And I, I will say one thing. I want to defend one thing. A lot of people are like, well, 
Uh, so they had to go through all these places to get this gauntlet, and it turns out Tony Stark could have just made a gauntlet the whole time. I understand a convenience factor, but keep in mind, it's Tony fucking Stark. He never needed to figure out how to use an infinity gauntlet. If there's something he needs to figure out how to do, like, say, time travel, right. he's gonna figure it out. Tony Stark is really the biggest... He, he's uh, honestly I think without Tony Stark and the MCU it's going to be a whole lot harder for them to like fix writing themselves in the corners because they always had Tony Stark to be like oh he's just so smart he'll figure it out right right so <laughs> I'm curious because Banner ain't that guy we know that like he's smart and all but he's still yeah because I mean we even got to sh- we, we got shown that when yeah. it came to the time travel thing yep. and they couldn't get it right and then Tony comes in and he's like yep he turned into a baby and then an, and then an old man yeah, I know what happened. And that that really just kind of uh, um, solidifies my fact that Tony Stark is going to live on as hologram. Like, he is dead. Tony Stark is very, very, very fucking dead. But don't and put a pass into a new name of Hologram. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he will upload his subconscious into uh, some sort of being. So and going along with that, uh, the storyline you were reading in the comics just a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, uh, with uh, pretty much the, the end of Civil War Two, when Captain Marvel kills Tony Stark, throughout the introduction of Riri Williams as Ironheart, yeah. he is her mentor as a hologram. And as but well, it, at the same time, there's a whole lot. I thought there was a whole lot of debate when you were reading that as to whether or not his soul was still kind of existing in the ether. There, that's kind still... Of, up for debate. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Like, even more now than ever after the, all the Tony Stark. Like, there's been... Keep in mind, since I started reading Tony... St- or, since I started reading Iron Man, I think I'm on the th- third or fourth volume of Iron Man since I started reading it. So, there's been a lot of different arcs is what I'm right, saying. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't put it past him. As, I mean, yeah, they killed their, their guy to be able to and create And if they want to do the, the, A- the A-Force you were talking about, bringing in... Uh, Riri Williams would be the How, way to do it. Thank you. See, if they're gonna be like, hey, you wanna fucking appease the left or whatever, like, fucking, what better way to bring in Riri Williams right. to be the new Tony Stark? Because I heard she was actually received okay. Dude, Riri's dope. Like, Brian Michael Bendis knows how to write a fucking son of a bitch. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, he made Miles Morales. Now we got Riri. <clears throat> Wee Wee. Um, so, no, I, I have a lot of faith. Uh, I'm not... It hurt, and I will actually go on to say, I will confess on microphone and camera, that I la- I went home after getting out of the theater at 2 a.m., and I laid awake, unable to sleep for an hour and a half, because of how hard it hit me that Tony Stark is in fact dead. Yes, that is very true. I... I have a hard time believing it myself and admitting it, that for an hour and a half, this movie kept me awake Hours way past my fucking bedtime. <laughs> way past my bedtime. So, uh, and I think it's all the more reason why I can't determine whether or not I really like this movie. Because I might just be biased. Like, they killed my guy. Right. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I find it, it's, it was a good conclusion. There's no doubting that. There was a lot of, you know, like I said in the beginning, they could have added 40 seconds to a lot of, uh, of dialogue to a lot of scenes oh, yeah. to explain a lot of things better. But uh, particularly Gamora, for one. Like, why is Gamora? Um, oh well, uh, you you. I think you were even asking me about this earlier. With you know, like, well, what's the deal with Gamora and Quill now? And it's the old Gamora is dead. The old Gamora was killed off when Thanos destroyed the Infinity Stones. So there is a Gamora running around. She is alternate dimension Gamora, but uh, alternate sh- timeline. She was not on the Milano though. No. No, she's you she so Quill, she is like, not a part of the as far as I understood at the end, she's not a part of the Guardians. No, we got Thor in her place instead. Yeah, from what I saw, her like and this may be just speculation, but from what I saw, her and Nebula are running off to go do something now. Cuz we didn't see her or Nebula at the conclusion of of the battle. Q Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 set up. So once again, it does set up some stuff for Phase Four for sure. It does. I mean, it's like, just a matter take, of will guess, we get audience interest. I guess we do know one movie confirms for Phase Four will be, in fact, Guardians Volume Three. Yeah. Especially now that James Gunn. Well, are, are we going to get As Guardians of the Galaxy? Dude, I would love to see. Uh, you know, I would like to see that on Disney Plus. All right. I would oh like yeah, because you keep talking. Like, we're going to be getting some Disney Plus shows from. Show me Valkyrie running the Asgardian. Show me Throg. Introduce Beta Ray Bill. You know what? Introduce Cosmic so, so, Mother. So, or, no, that's. So wrong. are we going to end up like now that you have 
are we going to end up now that there's a real cinema marvel cinematic universe is disney with their sideshows now going and their spin-offs going to create the marvel extended cinematic universe and it's all still going to all be relevant to each other yeah exactly yes. like how you know I, I understand now with disney and star wars all all of the expanded and exp- extended universe is no longer canon but that's different like this is now under the same roof and if disney is going to be sanctioning shows and they are actually accepting like like you said with loki we might get a show where loki's involved now because he got this um the the yeah the fucking cosmic cube exactly he got the cosmic cube and warped himself out and we never saw him again that's an opening for a spinoff of loki to be you know wreaking havoc and what would now be the extended cinematic universe which then will i guess extend into the serialized universe right i'm okay honestly to be perfectly honest i think i would rather see these stories told via serialization yeah and uh, and even go as far as to say give me one movie a year and the rest can all be done through shows you know uh, to me i think it would really lay back on the fatigue because you could watch things at your own accord yeah there's not so much of the worry of a spoiler factor. yeah because we really were talking about everybody's you know the so comic book about, fatigue and yeah everybody's so worried about everything getting spoiled too so it's a race to to like the fact is is that numbers suck this week because i was afraid of the internet and i couldn't do any marketing <laughs> Like Fair. you just yeah you're afraid to, I don't want it <laughs> straight up this is the worst week the podcast has had since yeah because because of this because movie. you you actively were avoiding the internet yeah. leading up and to this how event how much this the the reveal of all of this meant to me and I'm right. sure there's a large group of people that feel the same way yeah so I think that by by bringing it more down into a, a television type of series and it doesn't have to be 15 fucking episodes give me eight episodes at 42 minutes a piece you know they could even be 30 minutes oh, I mean I'm, I'm fine with the average American television show the 22 minutes which is what you get when you have a half hour block and you include commercials. Dude, Your actual yeah. show is 22 minutes. They're, I'm fine you, with that. You can make it interesting via show. Like Daredevil and Punisher have proven that. Unfortunately, they didn't have the right backers behind it to keep making it interesting. Uh, Daredevil was actually gold. I don't know. Yeah, but beyond but that... Yeah, I'd be fine with yeah. like small seasons, you know, and small episodes and just... If they give people more material that way, I think, like you said, you're more likely to avoid the comic book fatigue and in the long run, get more investment for your budget. And more and more often, like these TV shows... Get more return on your investment. Yeah, and because of what Netflix has done as far as like making it a viable thing, uh, more and more actors are like, oh, I'll do a Netflix movie. But Netflix is going to die when Disney takes over the world. But but because of what they have done, I think it's more and more viable for big name actors to be like, oh, I can work around a a TV show schedule. I don't have to take three months out of my life all at once to do this. Like, I could shoot this one day at a fucking... Well, and and it's also the same thing with... It's much easier to transition into voice acting from regular acting than it is to transition from voice acting... I mean... Regular acting into... It's much easier to transition from regular acting into voice acting than it is to transition from voice acting into regular acting. So if you wanted to, you know go ahead and keep those original character voices. Animate them. It, it, well, yes, and it wouldn't be such a problem out of their lives and, t- and you know, their uh, their time with their families and all of that if you're just having them come in, read, and not having to do near as much in animating them. And I, and I think that really is, to me, if someone were to ask me, if you want to keep this universe going, but you want to prevent comic book fatigue, personally, now that Disney Plus mm-hmm. is a thing, I really think that is the answer. And it doesn't need to be done in like an epic Game of Thrones type of fashion. No. It doesn't. And once again, it's going to, there's so many, like as we touched on, we don't have to worry about spoilers as much. No. Because there aren't a lot of shows out there like, oh, I can't go unless it's Game of Thrones, yeah. really. Like, that's, that's a whole different beast. And even then, there seems to be more of a a lax etiquette when it comes to that than there is with the movies. It seems like the movies, oh, because this is such a big deal right now, I can troll and spoil and be a spoy boy, you know? Whereas when it's, when it's, you know, kind of a low show, it's like, Hey, did you hear about that new show on Disney? Oh dude. Yeah. I don't want spoilers, man. It's 
a little bit more lax. It seems like. And you don't have to force. Fe- you don't have to force all of all of every. No, because you don't it have to force by a word six of hours. Mouth. Well, that yes. I think that the, if you're going with one thing that you're talking about, that is a benefit that comes from um, the Netflix era and what what they have established with that kind of thing is that word uh, shows can spread by word of mouth much better and. I think that's one of the things that Disney would definitely be able to count on is that their shows would expand by word of mouth. Be like, no, dude, you should definitely check out the Disney subscription service. Yeah, no, I I absolutely agree. All yeah. right, well, let's stop giving you know our advertising time. By the to way, Disney. Disney, if you go ahead and go with this route, Feige, you fucking owe me, bro. You fucking owe me <laughs> hey, because us, you did not announce this shit beforehand. This is my fucking idea. I know you're listening. Pay us, <laughs> pay us. Okay. So we got why is Gamora? You know, I yeah, that's. <sighs> Overall thoughts? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Overall thoughts? I hate I, it. I, I loved a bad movie. I, I it, it, Yeah, really, because I will say there are plenty of points that objectively do turn it into a bad movie, but there are points where it's just, yeah, but you did this, and that just made me go, okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see it again. I want to see it again. You get you have you give me so many points that it makes me a giddy schoolgirl. It's like how I first got into metal, like how I first got into real like real technical metal was I'm listening to something and I'm like, "Ah, I don't know if I like this. And then they'll throw in one awesome solo or some drums that just bring me in or a bass. To me, that was when Thor went, I knew it. Right. That, and it just was that real for me. I can watch this whole thing or like with metal, I can listen to this whole song specifically for this one point. And then you kind of grow to it to, to not just accept, but appreciate the rest of it despite the flaws. And I see how that's, that's how end game kind of was for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I, I, there, there's probably still a lot of bias that come into play for me. One of them being that I don't remember ever crying this much during a movie. <laughs> or Thor crying this much during a movie. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about my personal emotion <laughs> towards the movie. Right, right, right. Um, there was just way too many emotional scenes to where I just, like I, we touched on earlier, drowned out the parts that should have been funny. Mm-hmm. Just because I'm I'm too emotionally tied to these characters. Right. So, um, it was... It's kind of a win lose movie for him. Like it was, it was great, but it was too much. Uh, what I'm counting on is the director's cut. I'm in, I'm counting on every single right. one of those 45 second fucking dialogues, and I really I stand by that number. All it takes is 45 seconds of explanation right, between to just, these to, conveniences. Right to really negate the criticism that exists with some of those scenarios. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna say that for me, overall, as a Marvel movie. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. There hasn't been a perfect Marvel movie yet. Sorry. I still think that Infinity War was my 10. Infinity War was your 10? Well, as a Marvel movie, I give it a 9 out of 10. Um, As a comic book movie, an 8 out of 10. And as an overall movie, 7.5. Yeah, no, I, I, I'd probably agree with you on those. I I, I, I know that they just kind of slowly <laughs> declines, but... Yeah, no, if I, I guess if I, at this point, if I had to put it into numbers, uh, as a comic book movie, I'll give it a nine, eight and a half, eight and a half. Um, as a, what was the other one? Well, it was, oh, it was a Marvel it was, as mo- a Marvel movie, as a comic book movie, and uh, as an overall movie. Eight and a half, so across the board. Eight and a half's across the board. Yeah. All right, let's... Yeah. So when you round all that out, it's like a six, right? <laughs> <laughs> I give it a six. All right. <laughs> Fucking, no, yeah, I was, uh... Go see it. I'm going to see it again, I bet. Mason would probably end up tagging along with me. I probably will. It wasn't a bad movie. It really wasn't. It's just, like I said, because I'm so tied to it, there's a lot of bias to be had. It, it, it le- that's the thing, and... They leave a lot of room with the anticipation when you go in there. And I want to say that when I went in, I did not really have any expectations other than I should enjoy this. I had no expectations as far as storyline goes. I ignored all of you when you're saying, oh, it'd be cool if we saw World Breaker Hulk or it'd be cool if we saw this or that. And I'm just like, I don't care. I want to see what comes out of it. Yeah, well, my my most anticipated part out of all of it is the fact that there was, I think it was Scarlett Johansson, what some actress came out and said before Infinity War even came out, she goes, we just saw this, shot a scene where we've got 64 Marvel char- cinematic characters in the same scene. And I expected that in a f- Infinity War, and mm-hmm. when that didn't happen, I knew it was coming. In this. Right. There's no way that Feige would have cut that out. Like, th- th- you should shot 64 Marvel characters. Right. That's the battle. 
the fa- the okay and as many moments throughout the battle I was like oof alf the majority of my face was wet throughout and I got a I, the fact it was good it was great it all was right. fucking awesome all right well so, closing words closing words this movie sucked uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh there's Make sure you listen to the behind the scenes of this podcast. I will say that there was some fun, fun moments. Wait, that'll be coming soon. We've yeah. kind of got to edit some things. We, we've got some shit to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we might actually hate each other. Mason might fire me as the host if that were. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna work. No, I don't either. <laughs> um, we had a great time talking about this movie. I had a great time watching this movie. I look forward to Phase Four, however it may go. Um. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, you guys know where to find us. Twitter for all of your questions. I bet you guys have a lot to say about this, so you know where to find it. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, cheers, our empty glasses. Yeah, cheers to our empty glasses. <laughs> Thank you.